You're welcome to the Productive Health segment with Dr. Ajayi. And my name is Dr. Bayomi Ajayi. I'm really pleased to see you today. And uh, I'm also very pleased at the amount of response we're getting. People are sending so many text messages, and that's why we're taking the topic we're taking today. Before I introduce the, the guest that we're going to have on the program today, I'd like to say that we're going to look at, discuss the first visit to a fertility clinic today. But before I do that, I want to respond to some text messages. People are asking, I mean, when do you see a fertility expert? When do you need to start investigating if you face the challenge of infertility? Now, this is the, what we say. If you are below 35 years, then if you try for one year and you don't succeed, then you need to see a doctor, okay? You need to see a gynecologist. From there, depends on the finding, you might need to see a fertility expert immediately. But if it is, for in instance, that they're saying that you cannot ovulate, that's the only problem, then the gynecologist might just uh, try his hands on making you to ovulate. But if the finding is that you have tubal infertility, your tubes are blocked, or if the sperm is low, then it's, you need to see a fertility doctor. Now, also, if you are above 35, that is a, a, a more challenging thing. Six months is enough. We don't wait for one year. You must start doing investigations. But whoever you are, if you have been married for three years and you've not been able to achieve a conception, really you don't have any, pro any, uh, uh, you don't have any reason to see any other person but a fertility expert. So I hope that answers your question. Now, like I said, we're going to be discussing the first visit today. And with me on the program is Tola Ajayi. Tola, you're welcome Thank to the you. program. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to be discussing the first visit to the fertility clinic. I know you do this all the time. So please, I want you to, let's start from the beginning. Describe to me, most of the people that you see who are coming for the first, first time, this, can, do you have a word or two words, or do, can you describe the states in which they are in? Um, thank you. Um, fear is one of them. They are really afraid, as if um, this is the last place they can visit. That if nothing can be done in this um, kind of place, in the fertility clinic, then maybe there is no hope for them. So they are really anxious and they are afraid. Okay. So, you, so these are the kind of people that you normally see. They, the two, like you said, they are anxious and they are afraid. Okay. And the fear is born out of the fact that they don't know what will come out of this project. Yes. Yeah. And they are afraid that if this does not work, then what is, what's the next thing? Okay. Now, is there anything that patients can do to make this their first visit easier? Do they need to make any preparation, for example? Is there any document you expect them to bring? Well, once they are coming into a clinic like this to a fertility expert, um, it's better for them to have their questions written down so that it becomes easy when they want to ask the questions. They don't forget what they want to really ask the doctor. And also, if they've done any investigation in the past, mm. which, of course, most people will have done, then it's good to bring them so that when they come in, we can see the result of their test, and that can even help us in knowing the way forward with them. Okay. Now, um, one thing that we've seen, maybe from experience, is that many of the people who come the first time are usually women. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, they are. Okay. Is it important for their husbands to be with them this first visit? And if it is, what will be the role of the husband? Well, we try to encourage them to come together because it's, it's a combined thing. It's not a woman's problem, it's not a man's problem. But most times, it's the women that carry the issues, like it's my problem, so to say, because it's the women that the people from outside see as infertile. But it's important that the man too is here, so that um, if they want to make any informed decision, they can do that while they're on their visit. They need to know what is available to them, what they can be done, and there and then they can make decisions. And it will not be right for the woman to just listen and uh, now say, okay, I'm going to tell my husband when I get home. And probably most times when she gets home, she will not remember all that has been discussed. So it's good for the men to come with their wives. Okay. What about if the men come alone? Is it possible? Well, they do come alone sometimes, but it's better for both of them to come. Okay. Because they can actually see, they need, they need one another for support. They need one another for support. So that, like I said, if they need to make a decision, 
if they need to ask any question, because sometimes the men have some questions and the men, women too, they do have their own questions. They can bring them together and we we'll try to explain to them what is available to them and they can make a decision there and then. Mm. Now, one question that is agitating my mind is, really, which I'm sure viewers must be asking, what is the purpose of this first visit? What do you aim to achieve from this first visit? Well, most times when they come, we do inquiry, which of course is free, and we try to let people know that they can come in to ask questions. It's important for them to come because it's educative. You need to know what is wrong with you and what can be done. That's the purpose. It's educative. They know what the challenges are, and they know the treatment option that is available to them. And also, it will help them to, like, all the misconceptions they've had about, you know, IVF. They will need to hear something like uh, about the, the, the treatment protocols and all that, and that will help them a lot. And um, also during the visit, they know what uh, the prices are, you know, the financial implications and all that. Mm. Well, thank you that you said this to clarify some of the misconceptions. There is one thing that I'm hearing now that uh, they put babies into into special bottles that are imported. Please, what is your take on this? Is it true? Um, that's that's not true. IVF is not is not like that. Even though it's called test tube babies, but um, what happens in the tube normally is what happens in the laboratory. So that's the only bypass. You are bypassing the tube for the egg and the sperm to come together, and that's what happens in the laboratory. So it's not as if the babies are being put in tube for special days, for a special number of days or so. No, that's not true. Okay. Now, one of the things that you say you want to achieve during this first visit is that people should uh, will know how much they are going to commit into this project. One of the things that I also hear again is that there are so many hidden charges in this treatment. How far, how true is that? There are no hidden charges. We'll tell them what each person can do. Because we have, age is a factor when we're managing infertility. And the cost of the infertility also is one. And when we tell them the prices that are available for each person, there are no eating charges at all. We have a price list, and we tell them, if you need any other thing, it's in the price list. So there are no eating charges at all. Now, now uh, before I take my last question, the second to the last, what should the patients look for? For instance, this first visit, sometimes people use the window shop. What are the things that they should look out for in choosing an IVF center? Um, well, their first visit is very important because they form an impression. And um, of course, the success rate is one. They need to ask, what's the success rate like? Let them know. Let them know what is available to them. They can even visit the lab to see what we do. They can talk to the doctor, they can talk to the nurses, you know, they can go to the lab to see exactly what happens in the laboratory. That can help them to make a decision. Okay, all right. Now, just last thing, you said these people are apprehensive. How do you deal with this psychological effect of infertility? Well, as much as possible, because really, uh, to deal with things of the mind is not an easy thing. We'll tell them what the challenges are and what they need to do. We encourage them a lot. We'll tell them this is a problem that you need to face. There is really nothing that they can do apart from this if IVF is the only option for them. Then we'll tell them, like if, educating them on the type of treatment also will help them. Once they know what they are going to do, then it helps them a lot to, to, you know, to face what the challenges are. And of course, we encourage them that uh, coming into an IVF center is really the best option for them instead of going around and all that. One last question. Now, tell me, is IVF different in Nigeria than in other places? Because this is one thing we're beginning to see now, that people are now masquerading under the channel of IVF, doing all sorts of things that are really not IVF. Is it different from your experience? Do you think IVF in Nigeria is different from what obtains in the US or the UK? It's not. In my own center, it's not. It's not different from what obtains abroad. Um, what, that's w one of the things that people need to look out for when they come to an IVF clinic. Like I said, they can visit the lab. They can go on the internet to search. What they are telling me, is it true? You know, all that you have heard at the center, is it true? You can go on the internet and search. But it's not different from what obtains outside the country. 
Well, thank you very much, Tola. It's been a pleasure having you here. Viewers, we have come to the end of this uh, episode. I hope uh, you'll be better prepared visiting your IVF or fertility specialist now. One thing I want you to take home is that IVF is the same all over the world. I don't, if you want to go to Canada, you can go to Canada, but you're going to get the same service. So on this note, we leave you. See you next week. Thank you.